Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we're going to take a look at the shadow panel. So one of the things that people like about seeing their models in SketchUp is you can get some fairly realistic and accurate shadowing uh, on your model, and that is all controlled through the shadow panel, which we're going to look at right now. All right, so for this, I got a pretty simple model here. I got, got my buddy Sal over here, casting his shadow like Superman right there. And then a couple of blocks that are just, uh, you know, casting their shadows onto each other. Uh, and we're gonna take a look at how to manipulate that exactly. And we're gonna do that with the shadow panel. So over here on the right, the shadow panel is the one that has a little cube with a shadow on there. Pretty simple, right? We try to keep it easy here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that and bring it up. Uh, UI is pretty simple here. Um, I have the option of turning my shadows on and off. So I can actually, across the board, turn them on or off. So if they're so cool, why would you ever turn them off? Um, the simple answer is, you know, it is more intensive for your iPad to go through and generate these shadows, where they fall, that sort of thing. So if you want to keep your model, you know, snappy once you, obviously this is two blocks. This is not a complex model. If I have my full building with all the architectural accoutrement, all that stuff, I might want to turn shadows off while I'm modeling because it's going to keep it simple and then just come flip it on when I want to generate output. Uh, because it does take a little more processor to create those shadows. There's a couple other options down here. Uh, one is on face, on ground, from edges. Uh, we can actually turn these on and off so I can turn on face on and off. So that's just saying this shadow, we should see a difference here with Sal too. I can see, see that. So do I want the shadows to fall onto other faces? And I can turn that on or off. And do I want those shadows to fall on the ground plane? Now there's, remember, there's no geometry underneath. So this big gray expanse is not actual geometry. It's not a face. I haven't created anything there. It's just the general ground. It's zero high inside of SketchUp. And that's what this on ground is. If I turn that off right like that, it says don't show the shadows there. So for whatever reason, if you want a self-contained thing, I only want to see shadows where they fall on other items and not the general ground plane, uh, I can turn that off. That does not apply to if I go in and manually draw a big square on the ground. That's not the ground. That's just some geometry at ground level. Uh, the other thing that can happen here is if I do take something like, let's take this geometry and let's move it. Uh, I can end up with some weird stuff. If I see, see how that's happening right there, how it's falling below the ground, but the, the shadows on ground are still turned on, it can create some kind of weird stuff. So just be aware of that. Uh, that's what that works. From edges says, if I have edges standing alone, uh, do I wanna show the shadow from those edges or not? And then finally, use sun for shading. So I'm going to collapse shadows real quick and turn it off. And then let's deselect everything too. Oops. That's why I want to deselect everything because I don't want to start moving stuff around. Uh, so I have this use sun for shading. So as this is something a lot of people don't know about SketchUp, but there, there's two lights in SketchUp. One, there's the sun. That was what was just generating those shadows. And two, there's you, the user you light up our world. By that, I mean, as you move through SketchUp, it's like there's a light attached to your face. So the faces you're looking directly at are the brightest white. The ones that are on the opposite side are the darkest currently. So you can see as I move around, this back face is currently the brightest. If I sw swing it around 90 degrees, this side becomes the brightest. That's the normal light source for SketchUp. Now I have the option of turning on use sun for shading. When I do that, it uses the sun, which is somewhere up over here, shining down this direction to light up my surface. So these faces are the brightest because they're facing the sun. And as I spin around, I'll see that these backsides are darker because they're facing away from that light. Same with the bottom, we'll see, we'll see no light. While this is turned on, you can actually use this right here these, uh, these uh, light and dark sliders to change how bright or dark those light highlights or shadows on your geometry are. We turn that off, we go back to the standard. This still affects that, by the way, I, should, I, sh I said, I guess it's most apparent there, 
but I can actually uh, use these in other cases too. But the biggest thing where that happens is with the, the use sun for shading. The other thing that I have here, the, the bulk of this is showing these sliders in the middle. If I turn my shadows back on, these shadows are, ha okay, I gotta fix this. I can't handle this, this, uh, this geometry going through the ground here. That's just too silly for me. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna move it and uh, let's move back up. All right. So uh, as I look at these right here, I can actually use this slider to pick different times of day to see that sun go back and forth. And I can also choose different days of the year because the sun's gonna be in a different spot depending on what day it is throughout the year as well as what time it is. So this is all dependent upon this right here, the time zone. If I hit right here, I can actually scroll through all 24 time zones and pick the one that's appropriate. Or alternatively, I can use add location to actually put this model into a specific location in the world and then have it automatically infer the time zone. Whether I use the time zone or add location, it's the same. The same thing is gonna get fo or forced uh, and that's this, which is this information right here, uh, which allows you to accurately, get accurate shadows based on where the model's actually located. But that's it. That is everything there is to the shadows panel. It's very easy to use, but very powerful because the information you walk away with is not just looks good. I mean, a lot of times for, you know, just good looking model, like how do I get this shadow to fall over that second box in, in a nice way? And how do I get Sal's, you know, profile on the box? That's, that's the kind of thing you do. But this can also be used to do shadow studies. So you can actually use this information if it's properly located. I could see what the real world shadows are gonna look like based on the time of year, how other buildings are affecting my design and how my design affects the world it's being placed into. So it's a great tool, not just something that's pretty to look at, though it is pretty, pretty pretty. So uh, best of both worlds there on that one. Uh, hopefully you like that. If you haven't used Shadows Panel before, uh, that's kind of a an everything that's in there look at how that works. Um, it is, like I said, it does walk that line between just, just sometimes, for some people they just turn it on because it gives you a cool looking model. You know, you, you model a teapot or something like that. It really doesn't matter where the shadows fall. You're gonna adjust them so it looks nice. If you're creating, you're proposing to build a building in downtown area, you may have to actually provide shadow information, show where that shadow falls. Uh, and that's something you can do with that same exact tool. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here and you can be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, more than anything else, please leave us a comment. We love hearing from you. Uh, we like to hear, I'd like to hear what you think of this feature. Have you used the shadows panel in SketchUp for iPad? What other features do you think we should focus on here in square one? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.